Hang in there, it is. Smiley Kaufman for 61. Wow. I'm Smiley Kaufman, and this is The Smiley Show. This is The Smiley Show. Uh, We are definitely not sitting in the same location where we recorded all of our master's journals because, you know, just look at them. We're, we're, we're in different places. We're wearing different clothing. We're pros. We're, we're professionals. We would never do something like that. We're pros. We're pro we're pros, pros. And we know that we feel like we should deliver videos in different places. Yeah. That's why we're in a different place. And that's why we switch seats. We, <laughs> we switch seats and I turn my hat backwards, uh, which I think is, is enough. I think that's enough to establish new location. Uh, listen, we're, we're doing this. It's a better product when we're together. Just, just roll with us on this, but we're here now to, to preview the RBC heritage. And this is actually, it's a little bittersweet because I, I love this week at the masters, but I, I, I went like last year, it was, it was Easter weekend last year. So I didn't do Saturday, Sunday, the master. I went home, celebrated my first Easter with, with my son and my wife. And then the following week I I went to RBC heritage. We saw each other there. Um, and I, I, I loved it so much there. And I I was kicking myself because I had this Airbnb and I should have brought my wife. It's, It's a great place to hang. The course is amazing. The whole, you know, Hilton head is such a cool spot. And so this year I was like, man, I should have worked it out better so I could take my family down there. Cause this place, it's just, a, it's a really cool place to hang out, to pl- to play golf. I got out and played it like a, at a, at a public course that like for the rate was like, you know, awesome. The, the, the you know, Harbor town itself is a really, really cool track. Um, and it, it just, I just it felt like it was good vibes all around. Like what, what do you, I mean, you, you took, uh, you had Andy car, Anna Carter and Francie down there last year. Is that correct? Yeah, it was great. Uh, we went and ate at the same place every day. Did you did ever you? Come, did you ever come join us? It was a place called I think Java Burrito. No, I don't know it. Ten Java out of Burrito. Ten. ten out of ten. Maybe I'm saying the name of the place wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. All the players and caddies would go there too. What's the cuisine? Is it, is it like is it Mexican or is it? So they do a bunch of different things. They do breakfast in the morning, which is ten out of ten when you can do that, and wow. have really good coffee. So they have like coffee. They do breakfast. Oh, Java. So they do the burrito thing in the morning with the breakfast, but they do lunch and dinner as well. And they have, it's like a, you can either kind of go a Mexican theme or like a seafood theme with your burritos. Wow. So you can kind of go there back to back nights and be like, oh, I'm going to go kind of a Mexican burrito route. Or tonight I'm going to go like fish taco burrito type of situation. So that sounds amazing. It was great. And great margaritas too. A coffee, chips and guac. A chips coffee and, guac. and breakfast burrito is like yeah, that's a business model that's not been done enough. Except in Hilton Head. Except which, in Hilton Head. Which it's A plus. Maybe they're open to so franchising. Yeah. So we did that every day. Not to reach out. Um, it was awesome. And golf course. First time uh going to actually see it in person last year. I worked it uh for golf channel. Did, that, you, did you play this event ever on tour? So it was the only event I never played on tour because I thought it would always be too narrow for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just said, you know what? See you guys next week <laughs> because <laughs> nobody ever accused me for being the straightest driver in the world because I like to always a driver. I was a better driver of the ball than I was like a three wood, three iron player. You love a good high. Uh. You love to kind of explore the whole map. Yes. Um, yes. So anyways, uh, I actually was a little upset after walking around and seeing it because I realized pretty quickly that I actually really liked it. And I, I think, mm. I think I would have played pretty decent there if I was obviously hitting it straight, but really cool. Awesome. Uh, awesome layouts in which you have to play to, to the correct sides of the fairways. Greens, not overly firm, but very small, not difficult to chip around, but it all starts with the end. We'll put it in play. So uh, anytime you build, lineups or you're trying to figure out who's winning. It's you gotta, you gotta have a guy that can hit it T to green. So it, it's obviously it's one of the shorter courses on tour. Um, and you've, you've hit on a few characteristics there. So it, it's definitely, you know, T accuracy is, is at an emphasis. Is it, is it uh, as narrow as you thought it would be in showing up? Like, is it really, I mean, is, there's also a premium on approach shots as well, right? Yes, absolutely. But I think the, off the tee shots are a little bit more claustrophobic. The iron shots to me are, uh, they're challenging, but mm. I think players are always fine hitting it into small areas anyways, wherever they play. 
uh, very few courses where you, you, you don't have to worry about that as much. TBC Craig ranch, uh, comes to mind, but, um, <laughs> always work our way back to TBC Craig <laughs> ranch. They're beautiful. Zoysia. <laughs> no, uh, but, uh, it's a, you know, just look at the winners there, right? The past winners at this golf course, what comes to mind to me, Davis love was a really straight driver mm-hmm. of the ball, uh, hit it far enough to where he's able to take advantage of it. Matthew Fitzpatrick winning last year, really straight driver hits it low. Matt Kuchar. I mean, what are you talking about? The dude just went like this for 20 years. <laughs> Jim Furyk. What, what about a guy like your buddy, Jordan Spieth, who was in playoffs each of the last two years, lost last year to Matt Fitzpatrick the year before uh, beat uh, Patrick Cantlay in a playoff and famously can kind of hit it in a lot of different places off the tee, but still has had sustained success here. You know what my take is on Jordan and JT at this place? Okay. Is that they play well here on a golf course that would be defined as narrow because the holes in which the way that they're shaped, it's almost like you're in the woods and you have to shape a shot and you hit your best shot of the day. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, 100%. Where, where like the shot is shaped for you. And I think it it takes out all the guesswork of Oh, what shot am I going to hit here? And, and, and overthinking that's really what's right in front of you. And I think it gets you into creative mode where a player like, you know, Jordan plays always, always plays really well at the open championship because it makes you see shots. Mm. And that's what Hilton head does. It, it reminds me of when you were talking to Jordan about, you know, he, he hates a stock shot. You know, he hates, uh, if a putt is straight, he'll convince himself that it kind of moves left early and then it moves right late. And, and and that's, it's so interesting to hear that sort of framing because it's like, yeah, it's instead of him just seeing a bunch of sort of blank canvas, you know, shots, it's like, okay, I got to do this and I can kind of see the shot in my head and execute it. And, and, it, and it works to kind of their, their artistry. And why do I think that somebody's going to play really well that missed the cut too? Because of how yeah. hard of work it was for 72 holes out there. That could be a really good call because, because yeah, these guys kind of went through it and expended a lot of, you know, mental and physical energy. Uh, and, and, and Augusta is obviously not the easiest walk in the world. You know, I mean, it, it's a lot of up and down. So we are going to, on the, on the other side of your interview with dude, perfect. We're excited to drop. That it was recorded uh, this week in Augusta, Georgia, a really fun conversation about, you know, a lot of things, golf, um, also content creation, which, you know, a little bit of inside baseball, but for us is super interesting because that's a world we're sort of dabbling in. So we are going to get to that. And, and also our one and done picks on the other side of that interview, but the one, the one topic I want to hit on before we go there is um, a, a guy who's not going to be there this week and who withdrew after missing the cut at the Masters, Victor Hovland. Um, I just, you know, we, we briefly touched on this in our last Masters journal. It, where do you feel like we are with him? Because this is a guy that, you know, we both are huge fans of. He was on the show, was phenomenal, just kind of breaking down the golf swing, nerding out in a way that was super cool. Um, and, and a guy who we think has all the talent in the world, yet he's gone now from Joe Mayo last season uh, to Grant Wait for maybe a month or so this season, then on to Dana Dahlquist now. He spotted with the Masters and, and you know, feels like he's searching for something. Didn't play. He had a T62 at the players. You wondered why he wasn't playing before the Masters. Shows up at the Masters, misses the cut. Um, I'm just wondering like where you're, where you're at with Vic and, and what you'd like to see him pursue to turn it around. I think it just kills him to not be in contention. I think he's a player that knows what his ceiling is and he doesn't want to be anywhere, but close to his ceiling because it's just going to drive him insane. So why be out there if he doesn't feel like he can play to his fullest potential. So if he's a player that, that doesn't feel like he can win and doesn't want to play, and he's not going to play, then if that's your thing, great. Um, but it also is a, a bit of, I don't know if you want to have an alarm or buzzer button that you want to press, but you can oh, kind here. of like, see. you can see like, here. you can kind of halfway press it. Okay. Uh, all right. I don't know if I can halfway, but well, here, I'll turn the volume down. We'll go. Yeah. That's where we're at. Like a light one. That's where yeah. we're at. Like in terms of alarm, the alarm bells. Mm-hmm. It's like a ha- yeah. It's just, you know, miss the cut. I would have had a week off to go work on it show up to Hilton Ed and go, go win that week or go get in, in contention, go work on the things that you thought you did really well and build off the things you, you need to, you know, improve. So obviously he feels like he needs to go get some work done and it's where he doesn't have to think so much when he plays golf. 
it makes me wonder what he did with the time off between the players and the masters. And if part of that time was, you know, working with Dana Dahlquist, you know, the, the, the separation process from Grant Waite, trying to find something new, feeling like you're on the right track, had, you know, leading up to the first major of the year, trying to put some stuff in place and then you show up and it doesn't work. And how does that feel? I don't, I don't, I have no, you know, inside inside info on that or any Intel that that was the case, but I, I guess just theorizing as to like why he didn't play in between the players and the masters. And now on the other side of it, it's like, he's withdrawing from the heritage, you know, how many times is he going to play before the PGA is, does he feel like he needs to go back to the drawing board and sort some stuff out? Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What is the schedule coming up? The schedule is, if you'll goes, allow the research department, I to think pull it goes there. I think it goes Hilton Head. It goes Zurich, which is he yes. playing the Zurich? Uh, what a weird event I to don't, play. Like, I don't know. If you're if, gonna you're gonna take Hilton Head off and go play Zurich makes z- zero sense. I don't think he's committed to the Zurich. Um, why is it not easier to find the schedule on the PGA the following Tour week? I'm gonna go I, I think with it's, Cologne. No, no, it, it's uh, it's your favorite place in the world. It's um, Byron Nelson. It's Byron Nelson. And then Memorial and then Colonial. I think that's right. I think that's right. No, it goes it goes Memorial US Why Open can Travelers. I not just find there's a Colonial in there somewhere. I don't no. know when. I mean it's PJ Tour love ya, but it should be easier to find the, the schedule on your app unless I'm just a dummy and completely missing this. Here we go. I'm gonna pull it up right now. I think, is this my sweet tea? That is your sweet tea, yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh RBC Heritage, uh, and then and also there's an opposite field event this week, the Corrales Punta Cana championship, and then Sarah classic. And then the CJ cup, Byron Nelson, Wells Fargo is after that. And then, and that's all. And there's also an opposite field event that week, the Myrtle beach classic, and then the PGA. Oh, and then after the PGA, then we get Charles into, Schwab. That's cool. RBC Canadian open colonial Memorial Canadian open, Memorial. Okay. US open. I'm, I was way off there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got Samsonite. there. Samsonite <laughs> swimmy, swammy. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Snyder was way off. Um, okay. So, so I mean, do any of those. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel he's not playing this week. Probably not going to play the Zurich. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. You think he just plays one tune. time and tune up. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. He has to, he, yeah. he, he can't not tee it up or maybe he will. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So anyway, are we going to see Victor Holland at signature events next year? Like where, where is he at wow. world ranking wise? I think he's like four or five. I think he's okay. pretty safe. Okay, he's yeah, I, I, I think I think he's. I just want to like just throw that in the atmosphere. I don't. I don't think it's going to get that bad. Um, I mean, I mean, shoot. I mean, if, if we're looking for, he's getting a spot. Like, if, if, if we're, if we're if looking for comparisons, a massive drop off. Right. If he's, like, if we're looking for comparisons, um, JT last year. I forget where he was kind of at the beginning of the year, but he was like kind of in the 10 to 15 range. And then he fell as far as like maybe 25 ish, but was still in all the signature events this year by virtue of top 30 in the world. Which so, where is he right now? That's a good question. It's going to be close to dropping out, but I think he actually might've played his way into the next 10, maybe at this point. Um, Let's see. We're going to, we're going to pull we're, we're, the research department's working hard right now <laughs> and my cell service is working even harder. Um, <laughs> all right. So current world rankings, Victor is now six. Um, so, uh, yeah. Wow. This is Xander moved up to third Scotty, Rory, Xander, John Rom, Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland, Ludwig's up to seven. Now where's JT JT is 30. Whoa. Yeah, right on the line. Drop down from twenty eight. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so he doesn't need a spot for Hilton Head. Doesn't need a spot for Hilton Head, but uh, yeah, it's it's he's got to start playing well again. Yep. So good week for it. Good week for it. Uh, I think that's that's enough of a RBC Heritage preview on the front end of the Dude Perfect interview. We're going to come back and make our one and done picks. But yeah, as we kind of teased a little bit, uh, really fun sit down that you had with uh, with the boys at the CAA house. They just signed a new big deal. Super cool for them. Uh, bits on golf, some cool places they played. Uh, oh, we need to update. You'll you'll see what their picks are on the back end. But <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, uh, can't wait for that. They they took a shot. 
<laughs> and, and I admire that. So uh, it was a great bit. <laughs> they made some masters. It wasn't picks. a bit, but we made it into a bit. We're, we're, we're just gonna see how how well their masters picks panned out on the other <laughs> side. So you'll enjoy that piece of the interview. But uh, yeah, without further ado, Smiley's conversation with the guys from Dude Perfect. All right, guys, we are here from a couple of the guys from Dude Perfect. First off, boys, thanks for stopping by. Did y'all played some golf today. Why don't, why don't we just get into like a little round recap yeah. of yeah. Uh, old Barnwell? Is that yeah. right? Is old Barn- Barnwell. Start Sorry. us off, Gare. How'd you play? Yeah. Uh, course is spectacular. Um, I think there's some wonky greens out there. That's just me. I I'm disagree. A, I'm a purist. I think that's the protection uh, of those shorter holes. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely their defense. Yeah. Uh, and it's partly because I had 42 putts. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's where that comment comes that, from. Other than that, <laughs> he was they, real were, upset about yeah, the green complexes know? today. Were they, were they rolling pure? Oh, yeah. Oh, they were pure. They oh, were okay. firm. They were fast. Not receptive. Not at receptive. All. But it's brand new. It's I mean, brand it new. It needs to have some time. But yeah, no, the course was great. Other uh, than your putts, though, you played good. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, iron play was great. Yeah. That's about all I all I can take out of that round today. Good yeah. times too, you know. Yep. Who won? Uh, well, I, I feel, came out on top. I'm I about believe. to say forty two putts is. Yeah, I, I don't really, you know. I just think we we won at life today. <laughs> it was like we were golfing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I won three hundred bucks today. I felt pretty good about it. Yeah. Did you? Let's I did. Go. It actually, it wasn't from Gary. It, it wasn't from me. It was, it was from another, another guy. Cause another playing not, partner. I know not to bet you. Yeah. Uh, no, I played great. I, I enjoyed it. Little three over, uh, double bogeyed uh, sixteen par five. Very avoidable. Just tried to hit a hero shot out of some nasty stuff with a hybrid and hit the ball about six inches. So, um, it was, that was, that was ugly, but, um, yeah, other than that, it was great. Love it. So we, we are in Augusta obviously for the masters and how many years have you guys been coming here to the masters Four. this is our fourth year, fourth year. And y'all did an incredible shoot on property of Augusta national, but besides <laughs> that, have y'all played Augusta National, and how many times? We have. Uh, yeah, I've, Gary's played it twice. I've played it four times. And then, like you said, we got to film that video out here, which was, it's like, still surreal. Yeah, it, let's just talk about that because, you know, I think golf in general for the longest time was considered to be a very stuffy, mm-hmm. tough environment to kind of crack into, especially the elite golf clubs. Yep. And when it comes to access or whatever it is, I think this this video that you guys did at Augusta National – it, it kind of turned golf upside down. You know, like I think there was just nobody's ever seen anything like that done before on the grounds of Augusta. When did those conversations start of let's do something at Augusta? And after it was done, the feedback and everything you heard from everybody that watched the videos and just the membership at Augusta National. Yeah. So uh, the conversation started our first year out here, yeah, right? COVID year. Yeah. Um, we were hanging out. Uh, with one of the members uh, who kind of runs the media side, you know, all the members kind of have their jobs during master's week that they kind of had to fulfill mm-hmm. still. And so um, the member that we were with in particular oversees a lot of the media department. And so they said, Hey, you know, it'd be great if you guys could help kind of just socially promote the masters and that y'all are out here. And we were like, this is crazy coming <laughs> from like the, you know, no phones, no cameras, like all that. Fans, right? yeah. You know? yeah. And so we were obviously super humbled that they would even ask us to do that. And so we did posted some stuff that year. Um, had, uh, of course, people were shocked that we even got to film anything out here, like on the Berkman's practice screens and stuff like that. So it went great. We continued to have conversations. They said, Hey, you know, what would it look like if you guys could film a video out here at Augusta? And yeah, where did your mind take you initially? You're like, uh, well, yeah, we, talked- we, we went very conservative yeah. at, at first. That's yeah. where our minds took us. Uh, we were going to do a, the golf world record video that we actually ended up doing this year with Rory. Uh, we talked about that at first, but we knew time constraint was going to be an issue on the course. We weren't going to have four hours to just, mm-hmm. or just all the divots were taken <laughs> yeah. on. Hey, yeah. yeah, I promise we're about to get this. <laughs> we're promise. about to make this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we started there, that kind of transition. They're like, if you, if you guys could do anything out here, what would you do? And we're like, well, we know this would never happen, but you know, we've done the all sports golf series. People love it. Like that would just be like, it would shock people if we did that on amen corner. And, you know, we wait like a week and, we hear back and they're like, okay, let's do the all sports golf at Amen Corner. And we're like, <laughs> are we sure we want to do all sports golf at Amen Corner? Because now we're like kind of we're second guessing it. it. Like, yeah. do you're, we even want to do that? Like, yeah, kind of what you were saying. You're overthinking it. You're like, man, I don't want this to go bad. And yeah. because yeah. I want to play at Augusta National again. Correct. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, we wanted to well, honor at this the point. Club we've, and, no, we have played. We did play yeah. at Augusta right before. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So we were supposed to do it with JT. 
uh, we were we were all set. Uh-huh. This is the year that the players had the rain delay, so he had to stay, and now he was, he was playing on yeah. Monday, and so he couldn't come out. Well, they said Bryson was here scheduled for his practice day, and they wanted a tour player to be involved, so we were like, okay, perfect. Bryson can join us. We'll still make the video happen. Um, get out here, film it. Everything was great. Uh, we got the video edited. Like, the day that it's supposed to go live, we still haven't Heard. got the green light from the chairman <laughs> that we're about, and we're like hours from posting this video. Like, we've hyped it up. Like, people are kind oh of expecting gosh. something big. <laughs> Finally, we hear back, hey, you're good to post it. And we post a video, and within like two hours, uh, the chairman's like doing a press Presser. conference interview and gets asked about the video, obviously, and like, how did this even happen, whatever. And so thankfully, he had an awesome answer, and he was like, man, I didn't know a whole lot about the guys, but I've, I've done a lot of research, yeah. talked to a lot of people, and feel like they were great ambassadors for the club, and they painted it in a good light. And I always tell this story to go along with this. Cause I think this is why this ended up happening in the first place. And, and this was the goal ultimately, but we got an email from a dad after posting that video and it just said, Hey, uh, just wanted to thank the dude. Perfect guys. Uh, my son who d- does not care about sports, doesn't want to ever watch golf, play golf or anything. Just asked if I would record the masters, uh, where the dude, perfect guys film the all sports golf battle. So we could sit down and watch it together. And wow. that was why that is who we made the video for in the first place. It's not the golf purists or the guys that know, you know, every master's winner back to 1990. Like those guys love golf. They're in it. They know everything about Augusta and golf. And so that was who we made that video for. And it was a really, really cool response to see the chairman and all the members get behind it. And, uh, just, and just very thankful and honored to be a part of that and be able to promote such an incredible club like Augusta. But boy, we made some people mad. <laughs> <laughs> we did. The purest At the same man. time. Oh, man. The golf purest some friends. of those comments we got were just like, it was hard not to agree with kind yeah. of some of them. Really. We were like, yeah, well, dude, we had the same thoughts yeah. at one point, you know? Yeah, it was the like, only thing y'all had before. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. That, that, uh, to me, you know, it, it's so cool the way y'all did it, the all sports deal. Um, and, you know, in this era right now that we're in, and there's so much golf content yeah. out there right now. There's all these different golf groups. Uh, there's you know players that are leaning into the golf content side as well, and even just the partners that these players have as well with their club companies. They're leaning into all this different type of content stuff. But you guys are kind of the OGs of all this. <laughs> where have you, from where you all started to where you are now, and how golf has kind of fit into that umbrella? of of content what have you seen from the golf side and, and the content side and just where it's gone over the years yeah i mean it, it's it's really transformed i mean we've been doing it 15 years as of y- yesterday yeah, as of yesterday um which is crazy to think about um and yeah when we first started i mean youtube was very much a brand new thing cat videos and you know <laughs> n- nothing creative by right. any means um and it slowly has progressed. I mean, some of the uh, golf content now, I mean, it's really, really good. But, like, the good, good guys, I mean, Garrett's been doing golf stuff for mm. years now, it feels like. Yeah. Since he was, you know, I feel like eight, nine years ago he's yeah. been doing this thing. And so I, I think it's kind of cool. It, it definitely, like you said earlier, like, it was an elitist sport, like, I feel 15 years ago. And there's always that, like, man, I don't know if I can walk into this country club or do this or – and I really feel like the content alone has kind of lowered that bar a little bit and made it more accessible. More people are playing. They're having more fun with it. It's not just this stuck up, like, you know, tuck your shirt in and, you know, right. make, be proper and say, right, right, say right. the right things. And yeah. So I, I love what, you know, all these other groups are doing on YouTube and other platforms. And I wish we could do it. We're just not – I'm just not a good enough golfer to do that. I mean, and maybe people want to watch 42 putts. I don't know. Maybe it's out there. I think too, back then when we first started YouTube was, which is crazy to think, but it was still small enough where it was so much harder to be like a niche creator like that Mm. in just golf. Mm -hmm. Because even back in the day, like we, we love, they started playing in college. I grew up playing in elementary school and so we, we've always loved golf and loved golf content and making it. But early on, like that was some of our worst performing videos. And so that was why like the golf stereotypes was a big breakthrough for us after the basketball stereotype video. That was the second one that we did. The all sports golf video was huge. We did a video with Callaway and Jamie Sidlowski like way back in the day. 
And that was like one of our first like better performing pieces of golf content. And I think now it's progressed so far and YouTube is so big and there's such an audience now that you can be so specific in something like one sport and build an entire community and channel around it, which I think is awesome because we didn't really have that luxury back in the day. It was like broad appeal sports, broad appeal ideas for those first like two, three years to kind of get started. Um, and man, it's awesome. Like yeah. how many groups are doing all that, all the golf content now. It's, yeah, it's, it's cool great. And, and Charlie and I are kind of the beginning stages of all this, of us kind of building a business and, and doing golf content and, and kind of having different reaches. But for you guys, when I look at where you are now, you just got a massive investment, which congratulations. Thank, thank you, man. That's, thank that's, you. that's incredible. But from when you guys started, when did you get to the point where you're like, okay, this is something that we can turn into a real thing? It was six years in. What was yeah. It? Four years. I Maybe four years in. Yeah. I, I was telling you in the house earlier, like we all had other jobs. And so Dude Perfect was just something that we could do on Saturdays. And it like really <laughs> limited like how quick we, quickly we were able to grow, like how many brand deals we could do. Were y'all editing? Who's all? Oh, like, yeah. Dude, every, everything? We, we, we all had our, our own jobs. Yeah. We kept our, our team very small probably until like four years ago. Yeah. I mean, it was like maybe seven, eight of us in the office working. And then we slowly started to add more editors, but Corey did all the editing. Ty does all the creative. Um, Cody was over social media. Kobe was kind of like our business liaison, liaison between like our manager and us. And then I was like over finances and uh, merchandise. And that's like how we kept it. And we did it. Yeah, did that forever. forever. Yeah. With other jobs. So well, y'all are super successful. So give advice to us or anybody that's listening, that's trying to start something that sees a vision that has ideas. What's the best way you would go about kind of executing something like y'all been able to do? I mean, it's incredible what y'all been able yeah. to accomplish. Yeah. I would say uh, a couple things that come to mind. Uh, the quality over quantity quality, yeah, quality over quantity, I know was big for us in the beginning, putting out better pieces of content, even if it was, you know, further in between than maybe what everybody else was putting out at the time, I think was huge for us in the beginning, uh, starting out. We wanted every time that somebody watched a dude, perfect video, no matter what it was, that when they finished watching that, they felt like, man, that was worth mm -hmm. the amount of time that was worth the click to click on that video. Um, and so we were very, very careful about putting out content that we weren't proud of. Not that it hasn't happened, but we were we were <laughs> careful back in the, to back avoid in the early it. days, you know. Was, and, I yeah, was, yeah. I was gonna ask if, the, like, your beginning videos. Charlie and I had this conversation about some of our golf content we just released, and Charlie's like, "I think we're gonna be proud of this way down the line." And I, I had to ask. I mean, some of your uh, early videos, y'all look back and you're all cringe, or you're like, "Okay, it was passable." Oh, there's, there's two videos, videos I know that I then I'm just like, "Man, I can't believe we did that." <laughs> and I bet we said no to both of them at some yeah, point. One, one, which is just funny to. See say it was called trick squirts <laughs> <laughs> mio, you know the uh the little like that's drink great, flavoring mio. Uh, mio. that's mio dude yeah. they're still around mio yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. trick squirts that mio, was... pay, mio we said no to and then they were like well what about <laughs> this amount of money we're like absolutely yeah. yes we'll yeah. Do that. Uh, yeah, yeah that sounds great yeah and, Maybe. and then uh and then tidy cats yeah. cat litter Cat litter video, yeah. trick shots with cats. We recreated our first video that we ever made with cat litter bags because they were so lightweight that you could throw them. What's the saying? Some are for the real, some are for the meal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> those were for the meal. That that that's a true saying. Yeah, Church and you're words. gonna have those. Church you're gonna have amazing. some that are some for the meal. It's like you know, I don't want to do this, but man, you know, we gotta. I got to provide for the family. We yeah. talked about doing a, a SOS mustache because like we, none of us like sell would ever like stash. rock the, the mustache. <laughs> and so it was going to be the sellout stash. So if our audience ever saw it, they knew they, they would they, know like, Hey, look, let's give them this one. Yeah. They need it. They needed this one. They'll be back in just a little bit. Uh, but we, we didn't let the sellout stash thing ride. Long no, enough. we did it. So yeah, it's, there's, there's some that are definitely cringeworthy looking back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and, and your answer as well, kind of to what he was saying, just about advice that you would give to an early creator. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so hard. Like I was, I was trying to think like if we started today, you know, what would we do differently? I do think it helps being with, you know, four other of your best friends, you know, like Mm. You can bounce ideas off each other. Like have have a good support group around you, mm -hmm. even if it's just one guy doing it. At least have, you know, have a good support group around you, encouraging you, knowing like, hey, look, there's gonna be the comments on the videos or whatever that will make you be like, and it's always just one. You yeah. always get focused yeah. on one. It's one guy. <laughs> it's one guy, and you're like, man, 
the whole world now thinks like yeah. this one guy. And I'm just like, it's not true. It's just internet keyboard warrior things. And so like always having that. Cause like, man, if you were in it alone, like that would be really tough. Like yeah. to put out something that you think is, is really good. You spend a lot of time on then somebody just with one click of a button, just crumbles your world. Like it's cause it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, I think also one thing that our editors told us, we do like a little recap. We try to at the end of every year and like, look at what worked, what didn't mm -hmm. work, what we want to try for the new year. And they showed us, they pulled up like all the videos that like we were really like pumped up about, about that we yeah. were excited about ended up being like all the best performing videos yeah. throughout you the year. You can see it in your work. And so like, I, I would just say like the stuff that you truly enjoy doing, like it makes the content so much better mm. and people can see it. Even if you can't see it while you're doing it, other people notice like how much better it is just because it was something that you were really passionate about. So I would just say if you, if it's something that you truly enjoy doing, like there's going to be other people that enjoy watching yeah. it. And so that would be some advice. That is fantastic advice. And do y'all hear this? We're, we're piping in bird. Yeah, we are. Yeah, That's, we are. We actually like, can't hear that here. Nash, we are. But, on the audio. How, on the audio, you can hear the noise. <laughs> How good is that? I mean, we starting are starting to hear some master soundtrack. I, yeah. It's almost it's almost like <laughs> my producer right now is like, all right, let's let's turn the page to a little yeah. bit more masters content here. I think that's a good way to segue. Yeah. All right. For sure. So let's let's talk masters. Let's talk this week. So this this episode's gonna be airing the week after the masters. So Let's just go ahead and get our picks. Okay. Yep. So, so we can really yeah, look so foolish if you when this up, we airs. Like, this is a great way well, to lead into. Uh, I mean, look, the news winning. dropped today that, like, I mean, if Scotty has a five stroke lead, he's, yeah. he's going to leave and withdraw. So yeah. you can't pick Scotty because I'm, I, I feel gonna very certain the, the kid's coming. So, how many shot lead would it be for you guys where you'd feel comfortable about winning the Masters? Uh, <laughs> on a, like, how many holes left? <laughs> 18. Uh, wow. Well, Wow. <laughs> from the, uh, from the master's tee? 70 degree day. Th no, exactly. This exact same setup. I'm going to go 12. I need 12 a 12 shot. shot. I need 12. Okay. It's just a 10 mile an hour wind day. It's just a one club wind day. I need 70. 12 mile. I need 12 shot Against lead. the master's field? Tw you, 12 strokes. You're a psycho? Well, dude, if I have a 12 shot lead, I'm balling out. <laughs> or feel, everybody's playing really bad. No, so <laughs> I like the way this is going. You're basically going out there cold turkey. Because I'm just... Okay, so you're just saying a, if, if I you enter myself into the thing, oh, man. I so, need, like, Scotty's got to leave and he's like, hey, man, you got to win the Masters I need a for solid me. 40 strokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't think yeah. you're far off. I think it's close to that 40 number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 40 strokes? Just Come outrageous. On. Hey, look, I, I have watched Scotty up close and personal. He's he can just turn it on, man. I don't I don't know. I I would not want Scotty coming. Okay, I have a you're a, this, two, you're a two point seven index. Is that yeah. what you told me? Yeah. So what's your number? I, he's thirty eight. I see it. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I'd like to say a nice low number, but it's not. It's I think realistic. I, the professional golfers are just different. Yeah. They're we, different this level. Is, this is we're kind of getting off track here, and we can yeah, avoid let's, this. Let's reel it back in. No, let's reel it back I, I got to ask because we were just having this conversation. <laughs> okay. Here's the hypothetical. We're going to use your buddy Jordan as an example. Jordan's got a seven iron. Okay? Only seven. Only no seven. No putter. No nothing. Okay. I play the master's tees. He plays the master's tees. I have a full bag as a 2-7 handicap. He only has a 7-iron. Who wins? Straight up. Who wins? Basically, the question is, what does Jordan shoot? Seven, yeah. What does Jordan shoot with a 7-iron all the way through? He has to putt, chip out of the bunkers. I mean, like you're gonna in 18 holes, you're gonna get in a bind with a seven at some point. The biggest issue I see with the seven iron is is the deep bunkers. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And You'll that, get in a pickle at some point. I, I think that's where you so run into So a seven and a problems. wedge and a putter, Jordan wins. I, th I think I think you win. Okay. Because and it's not the distance; it's more of a guy. He can like what does he <laughs> does he does he break 85 with a seven iron? Um, only I, I think he beats you with two clubs. Yeah, so like a wedge. If he, if you're able to give him a wedge, I think he wins. That's not the hypothetical. It's, I know. I, I, I think you win with one I think club. You win with, he says he wins. With, you win okay. with one, but you put if one you more club in his hand. He's, <laughs> you were done. I agree. I mean, I, for what it's worth, <laughs> you were yeah. done. Done. I think you give him a wedge and a seven iron. All right. So back to Jordan here. I think good, he has a good shot this week. That's, that's your pick. pick. It's not my pick. My pick. <laughs> <laughs> my okay. pick is another one of one of my another one of my buddies, Will Zalatoris. Will Z. You know he's kind of flown a little bit under the radar this week because he i has. think but at this point on a wednesday i've i've got in my head probably 17 guys winning yeah so it's a i've told probably 17 different guys to 17 and the only reason i'm saying well. willie right now is because i truly expect will to be number two 
Scotty being the lead, he gets the call. He has to withdraw. And then it's Will. Will Zalatoris goes to the... If that happens, that's going to be wild. Okay. <laughs> Willie Z's locked in. <clears throat> um, I'm going... Um, I, I really... Earlier in the week, I was calling for the fourth ever back-to-back Masters champion. And I was saying our boy, our boy John Johnny Rump. is going to run it back. Yeah. After watching the par three contest today. Whew, yeah, he would, man. He's got to dial it in. Oh, Rom didn't look good? Yeah, the whole I group think didn't was, look good. Saw, see, I think, Charlie and I saw him hit the pit on number seven. We're like, this oh, guy's okay. going to win by 10. So well, it's, I think it's funny was you see a, one shot out there and you're like, okay, this guy's you winning. Know, I mean, <laughs> he would break down the live barrier, you know? Yeah. Well, Brooks um, did it last year at PGA, but doing it at the Masters is a totally different deal, I'm right? going. I'm going dark horse pick. Jason Day. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I did not see that. I'm telling you, man. It's, the, it's, it's look, because of the lifestyle clothing, man. Malvin. I'm going to look special. He's or I, ridiculous. It, it just, in, I mean, in it's a, in a week. It's a, either a, like a miscut or yeah. potentially like in contention for yeah. Jason Day. I don't but think there's I, any in between right now. Yeah. I do think Speeth has a good week. He always does. He'll be, he'll be in contention. Okay. Or Hovland. There it is. Or and Ricky. <laughs> Ricky, just Ricky. throwing, just throwing another one out. <laughs> is I, I got, I mean, another hypothetical though too. Okay. It's like just looking at Ricky putting on a green jacket. I just it, it's just a sight. It I can't, I can't make my myself visualize that. I love Ricky. It's just it'd be hilarious. I I would love Ricky to win just for that to see Rombo put it on Ricky Fowler. That yeah. would probably be one of the one of the best stories outside of maybe Rory winning. You would say it would be Ricky, no yeah. doubt Ricky, for sure. Maybe a Rory Grand Slam. I mean, that's that's a pretty big. It'd be special. Too. It'd be I special. want Rory to get the Grand Slam, but I want Willie Z to win it more. You do. Okay. Okay. So besides doing content collaborations with the Smiley Show. What other golfer are you like, man, I want to do something with this, this golfer love the way he plays the game or, or even outside of that, turning the page on another conversation, who's y'all's favorite players, man, it's kind of the same question. And that's in a really tough. Um, hmm. I, it's weird. I feel like back in the day, our closest, um, athlete connections were, NFL players. We had just worked with a lot of teams yeah. and I feel like now it's completely shifted to where it's all <laughs> golfers, all golfers, which is great. Like at this point we love it in, in our careers and getting to play like more and more incredible courses and stuff. Um, man, that's a, we, we had a, we had an awesome Rangers game experience with Scotty, Scotty and Jordan. 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 Game one. Game one of the World Series, um, man. It, it was like, oh, I remember that. It yeah. was, I, um, I, I felt that. like we were bonded for life at that moment. It's like, it hey, was dude, magical. Man. It was magical, man. So, yeah, I mean, we I guess the, doing a video with Scotty. We put the rally great. caps on. Yeah, Scotty would be great. So, doing yeah. a video with Scotty would be number one. Is that, is that one of the guys that y'all cheer for the most if you had to pick I, a guy? I, so, I've always yeah. been a Scotty guy. Look, he is, he, at the end of the day, he just goes out there and to his business. He hits it right down the fairway. Probably one putts for birdie. I mean, he overall, plays the same game a lot. Not like a not like a flashy golfer by any means. He just gets it done. We love it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, a lot of fans out here on the yeah, show. I love a lot, to of, see lot of fans out here on the show. See how many people are out here watching us. It's great. Um, but that's why that's why like Jordan and and Ricky and and John Rom are always. Just fun to watch because they, they wear their emotion on their sleeves, you know, and it's just it's fun to watch. You know, Scotty doesn't. Scotty's just he'll maybe it's in his head, he's freaking out, but he looks very calm always. <laughs> I'm freaking out on dude, you gotta make this two footer, man. All but right. yeah, I don't I mean Scotty would be awesome to film with for sure. And if we had to create the perfect dude perfect golfer between all five of you, is, oh, is like it, the and, attributes do, of games. Do any of the three the guys that aren't here make it into the creative player, like between the five of you. Well, I think Cody makes it in for the uh, just like, the height, just the so he look better. Well, well I was going to say more just like a for professional the, for okay. the vibe for the you know he brings he brings the fun. Yeah. So other all, than that, they offer nothing. Five, uh, so you, there's I'm trying to think of something the twins could provide us. Um, look, I got to tell you a story, man. I mean, he laid up on a par four from one sixty today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which person did that. I'm just going to tell you. You're not going to say which twin. It was a but one. So twin I don't think we're taking anything. I don't from think their so game. either. Um, maybe maybe Kobe's maybe his Kobe's style. Dra- his style. His, yeah, I was going to say mean, his style. Okay, that see his, we, yeah. we can incorporate everybody. So we got to so find Kobe's, something for Corey. So Kobe's style, Cody's fun. Uh, 
I, I I mean honestly, it can't bring my putter. It's got to be your putter. It had to be my putter. Yeah, we heard we I found mean, out you that your drives. You could take drives at, like on the back nine. Yeah, back his first his front nine with the driver is you know getting not, old, man. I need, to, I need to warm up. So more. we're using most of your skills, but we're trying to you maybe, incorporate <laughs> some of my skill in there. Yeah, okay, incorporate some of your skill, and then maybe just kind of use some accents from the rest of the team yeah. to kind of fill it out as maybe Look, a caddy long part long style part threes looks. I'm I'm more of a Bryson type comparison, you know. I just. I de loft the heck out of the club. Like, yeah. So I can hit a five iron 240 if I need to. Yeah, yeah. you can. So sure we'll can. take that. So, okay. Last question. Favorite hole at Augusta National? I got a favorite. Let me go. I would probably say Firethorn. Whoa, I mean, you went with the the name. And, and that, for those that don't know <laughs> what Firethorn yeah. hole is, uh, that can would you be please? number 15. Okay. Number 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Deep. of course. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, that's a fun hole, man. Is. Um, uh, and, and any reason why? Just like a shot I think, that stands out? I think you out. can play it mo- most a lot of different ways. It, number one, demanding tee shot. You need to be in the right area to have a shot to go for it. And then if you want to go for it, you have to land like a, a hybrid just on – a strip of no bigger than this porch and it's just really challenging and fun i mean i would never go for it. i would definitely lay up but <laughs> i have a good it's story a thought to go for it so my monday of the masters of the year i played there's so many people in a practice round, as you know so yep. many people out there and i was ready to play the masters that year but i got to 15 and you know it's off that down slope on that wedge shot yep. yeah so it's a little awkward yep and it's weird in a tournament because I'm always turned on in a tournament practice rounds. I never played that well because I just was not in tournament mode. And dude, I chunked this thing and I barely even get it to the water. And everybody was just like, just moan of, Oh, but like when you're not turned on in game mode, <laughs> dude, I just wanted to go crawl underneath a tree. Dude, and I can't imagine doing that. That's wild. And so I get up to the green and now I'm hitting bunker shots from the right bunker. I'm like, just don't chunk it. Don't blade yeah, don't it. Don't blade now I have it. all these thoughts don't in my brain it. that <laughs> don't normally come up in a tournament <laughs> round. And I had a great week. I was in the final group uh, with Jordan on Sunday. But the practice round that week, I was just like, oh, my God. Dude, that, that was, that was a nightmare situation. <laughs> um, I would say uh, I'll, I'm going to answer numerically. I okay. think as most people would when <laughs> yeah. you're talking about golf holes. Uh, I'm going to say number 11. <laughs> Uh, it oh, was, it was my first ever birdie at Augusta national. So it was special, great hole to do it on to. Um, so that, that'll always and don't get me wrong. Dude, I doubled 15. <laughs> Still, uh, beautiful okay. hole though. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Any honorable mentions? I mean, the whole course other than 14 and 17, I was surprised 12. Yeah. Yeah. I was, surprised 12 uh, was going to say 13, 12. Just feels too like it, you can't it, say 12. It feels cliche to say it's too 12. cliche. So yeah. the guy goes number 11 and he goes maybe Thir- a 13, 13. and I'll then he also get goes around it. And then he also goes Jason day to win the master. Yeah. So the guy, <laughs> yeah. he is fading the public. You know what? Week, you know, a fun hole yeah. that you have to, you have to understand to be on property is 10, 10. T shot on 10 is like, just where a do doozy. You this? And, it, and it's just, it is and then so you walk downhill. down there and it looks so big. Like, you're like, how do I miss this fairway? That's a, that's a really well designed hole. Yeah. Really and, well designed. And you think hole. about Rory McRoy hitting it over in the lodges yeah. over there to the left, and you're thinking, to yourself, how does he do that? How did he do that? Yeah, I know. Makes, like, <laughs> makes you wonder. Makes you wonder. Makes you wonder. I don't see the twins don't even do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe Rory gets it done this week for the Grand Slam. That would be a great story. Or maybe Jason Day maybe. Uh, wins this <laughs> weekend. I can't wait <laughs> just for him just to saying, pull this thing just out. Just saying Jason Day is just amazing, I dude. Love if it. you called that. I did. I did oh, call it. You what and do you Jason mean? are celebrating right now as people are watching this. I know we are. Well, wow. this was a fantastic conversation. The dude's from Dude Perfect. Uh, this was great. I know y'all are going to enjoy this. And, and fellas, can't wait to maybe do some golf stuff yeah, with you guys down do the road. And uh, I got to see this putting in action. Yeah. And I got to see your ball striking in action. <laughs> well, so I'm going to get a get lab putter, so it's all going to be fixed next uh, week. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Charlie's <laughs> pointing by. <Yeah. laughs> we got a tinker behind yeah, over there yeah. at Charlie <laughs> here, So Thanks, Smiley. Appreciate Thanks, it. Boys. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That was Smiley's conversation with the guys from Dude Perfect. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I, I'm actually very excited to send this to my my cousins who are huge Dude Perfect fans. Uh, so they're really. I sent them a little pic of you in the interview. Like, what you did a Dude Perfect interview? <laughs> Shane Shane Bieber rolled up with his son to meet them. Oh and, yeah, and this Shane guy, Bieber, friend of the uh, now friend, friend of, of us, the, and of us, wants to be a friend of the pod. So if you're a, a Gamecock fan, if you allow it, he actually wants to uh, 
yeah. a little chit chat at some point. Head coach of of Scar. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, of South Carolina, you must have to put that in there because the real Carolina now we, it, it was, uh, it was, it was great running into him and I, his, I, I, his bit on the Carolina thing was funny. It was really good. And, and by the way, in football, especially they have our numbers. So <laughs> they are the real Carolina right now. We need to work on getting there, but, um, but yeah, cool interview there. And, and so let's just flip it over the, the part of the show that, I'm starting to dread more and more because <laughs> we're too hot. <laughs> we're too little too hot. We are now we've now hit f- one of the two of us. We got to be clear about that too. One of the two of us has hit five uh, of eight, p- uh, five picks in the last eight weeks. We've picked a correct winner p- between the two of us. I've had three correct picks. One of those was Scotty. You've had two correct picks. One of those was Scotty. So we are hoping to make it six for nine, uh, but doubt it. I, I highly doubt it. Um, please just just give us some grace here. All right? We're going to do the best we can. We're trying to help out. Uh, and, and maybe we keep it going. Maybe this is just meant to be. But I have the first pick this week because you, of course, had the Got first it. pick last week with Scotty. Um, you take it. I, so I was trying to kind of find a guy that has a little bit of form. And I know you say about the miscut of the Masters, but I want a guy that's kind of playing well. So I was looking back at last year's leaderboard. And there's a guy who finished T7 four shots off the lead who didn't play great on Sunday at the masters, but didn't play like poorly finished T 12 was kind of in the mix for a while. And I, I just kind of like rolling that form into, you know, maybe have another a good week and, and maybe kind of surprises people. I'm going to pick cam Davis. Wow. That's a surprise for you. It's a Basically. good pick. You like that? It's a good pick. I, I, I feel like, I kind of want to roll the dice a little bit. Can you miss a cut this week at Hilton Head? I don't think you can. Oh, yes. Signature event. You cannot miss the cut. So we're not missing a cut. How about that? Wow. Okay. Is my guy playing? Who's your Who's your guy? Oh. No. He's what? a... He's a I'm changing, you want to tell, I've, you I've want changed to, my pick. You changed your guy. This guy's never won on the PGA Tour before. This guy okay. I'm picking. Okay. He might have... Potentially the best hair in the field. Okay. Now you really throw me for a loop and he's in form and trending. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Wow. Tommy, 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 Fleetwood, <laughs> Tommy, 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 Tommy Fleetwood. Yes. I love that. I love the song. I love the pick, you know, played his way into a T3. Can you imagine Picking Tommy Fleetwood in his first PGA Tour win would be spectacular. And back-to-back Englishman winning this event why, second of years. Why not? Look at us going all international. Why not us? Why not us? I mean, we're we're just gonna try to keep it rolling. I, I think this this is this is the part of is the he, is one Tommy done. playing. <laughs> uh, let me look at the. He, he's he's in the inside the field uh, note here. Or no, maybe he's not. Let's see here. Um, why is he? It's going to be hilarious if he's not. <laughs> no, no, he, he, he's in, he's in the, uh, well, of course the top 50 last year in FedEx cup. No, just more of it. If he was. Yeah. I mean, the, the, oh, the, the we're, we're looking at this on a Sunday night after the masters. So they haven't made any updates and we'll, and we'll have to post some sort of update if he's not in the field, but he's not withdrawn as of yet. Can I just, can I give you my alternate pick? Sure. Give me an alternate pick. See, woo, shaking <laughs> at ass, shaking at ass. That's my, that's my backup. All right. Well then I'm going to make a backup pick then just in case cam Davis withdraws. Okay. And I'm going to go with a guy who also finished T seven last year. And I'm going to use your advice and I'm going to hedge with the guy who missed a cut at the masters. Mm. I'm going to go with Brian Harmon. as my backup pick. Okay. Good luck. When I picked Brian Harmon, he missed the cut after <laughs> almost winning the players championship at Valspar. <laughs> He just needs a little bit extra time. Yeah. Well, we're glad it's your backup. It's back. Those are our backup picks. We qualified. So we've actually, there are actually, there are a lot of one and done formats where that's exactly how it goes. So there you go. You have four people to choose from for the one and done, but let's give some ideas. Let's, let's keep going. This let's is like, keep the, going. no, no bad, no ideas, bad ideas this on, a, on a player. So, okay. So we, we were, we were briefly floating this idea. I don't know if you were trying to mislead me or, or you're making a joke with me, but Tom Kim just got some crystal for shooting 66 on Sunday at the masters. Tom Kim is famously not the longest player in the world. And it's this a, is a short track. Do you like a, this for him? It's a course fit. It, it is. is a course fit. Tom Kim should play well 
at the RBC Heritage. <sighs> he should play well. I, and it, it does it. Am I incorrect in saying now? I know it's not wide open like a linksy chorus, you know, but it's got kind of like that sort of character and then the quirks and the intrigue. And a guy like Jordan Spieth plays well here, who's played well in open championships. Tom Kim plays well across the pond, Scottish open, open championship. Is that, is that vibe match a little bit or am I off there? Uh, Could be a little off there. You're a little off. I'm there. trying I'm trying to sell you. I'm trying to sell you on a picture, on a vision. <laughs> You're a little off there. Who, <laughs> <laughs> who else do you like this week? Um, that's a good question. How about a uh, Tyrrell Hatton? <laughs> <laughs> I really think Tyrrell Hatton probably is a good top five. Play. T nineteen last year. <laughs> uh, golly, I mean, it, everything else kind of looks standard. But like, if you're, I think more at the top, I like Siwoo this week. Yep. Uh, so he's he's a player I like. Um, who who have I been enjoying watching lately? Uh, I, I think Xander's really really close. He might be if Xander last year, solo fourth, two shots off the lead. I think if you're taking a guy who's, I think just right on the cusp of winning Xander Shoffley is right there. Why, why am I not taking him in the one and done? It's because I want to bet on Tommy Fleetwood the week he wins. And I just don't want to miss out to that party or I probably would have <laughs> taken Xander. Well, it, it is a one and done. So like you can't take him anymore. So I wouldn't avoid JT or Jordan either. If, if you are depending on how you price out these guys. I, I don't, I don't know how all that works, uh, but you can't take all these guys that are right. At right. The top top form. But what, what, what about a can't lay who, who actually the first half of the round on Sunday, the masters played really well and then kind of backed up a little bit and he, he had a good Saturday. I want to say, and this is a guy who was, who he's been finished, non-existent this year, but he, fin- he finished solo third last year. And then he was in a playoff the year before and lost to Jordan. So they said it could yeah, be a course Cantley's fit for a good him. Play, yeah, I, I think Cantley is too. It's it's hard to say because I feel like the Masters is going to take a lot out of guys. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see of of which top players are going to or show up with the energy to go out and compete again. It's if Scotty plays, I I, I don't think he's going to win. I think he's going to be absolutely beat. Can I throw one more at you that that intrigues me a lot? Uh, this guy finished T 11 last year, RBC heritage, uh, finished 12 under five shots off the lead. And then this week at the masters, uh, he shot 70 on Sunday to finish T 20 at three over Taylor Moore. I'm high on Taylor Moore right now. Okay. But I don't know about there. Do you don't like the fit there? I just, I think he's got a filthy short game and he's got a fantastic golf swing. So I just, I see him playing. I just don't know about this golf course. So even though he played solid here last year, what do you finish? You said, I I think it was a T 11 finish. He was, you know, 12 under not, not, you know, it obviously was, it wasn't close to lead, but I mean, that's a, it's a solid year. Scotty Scheffler finished T 11 last year. John Rahm finished T 15 last year. I'll jump on it with you. I, I, I'm just trying to give some ideas to the good people out there. Yeah, that, get, that's coming straight from my gut. I'll get, I'll get on there that's, with you. That's my research system. Uh, any other names you want to throw at the, at the, the good people I, trying to put together a DFS lineup? I feel bad we go? about Russell Henley this this week. That one to yeah, me seemed like a guy fault. that was going to play really well. I, I, I mean, also, I, I feel bad for Nick Taylor. I also kind of shot wonder, a million. I also kind of wondered too. Do you think Colin Morikawa has a really good week? Ooh, because. It'll go one way or the other with him. Yeah. It's like, was that kind of like a fluke? Cause there was some room off the tee and then gave him an opportunity to get hitting some good irons. Cause I know today wasn't, wasn't great. I mean, it was fine, but it wasn't, he didn't implode by any means, but did, did you see his tweet after yeah, the round? It was great. So <laughs> was good. A, a few things I learned this week. Don't hit it in the water on 11. Duh. And two is get better at T flip. So I'm always going second. <laughs> that yeah. that T flip was hilarious. Colin, uh, Colin will have a good week, right? I, I think I do think so. I mean, I, I feel like with him, it's um, it, it, it's just interesting how we we talk about some of these guys where we spent you know the majority of last year talking about how Scotty has the same round every week, but he can't putt, and like, is this ever going to come back? And and you know, will he ever win anything ever again if he can't putt? And then he figures it out and it's like, okay, this is the second coming of tiger. Colin is, I think in a similar boat. Now his ball striking has not been 
prime tiger levels like Scotty was last year. But I mean, when, when he's on, he's, he's, you know, top five, top three ball strikers on tour. Right. Right. Which and, is what we kind of saw like since Friday morning. And, and this is a course fit. That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm leading to is like, it's just with him. It's, it's always going to be the putting right now. And, and if you can figure out something there, and the ball striking is the the way it's looked. Yeah, absolutely. And this guy should be contending every single week. So I like that. I like that call. Okay. That's all I got. That's all you got? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I got no other guys. That's all I got. Yeah. So Tommy think, Fleet was winning. <laughs> I think this is the part of the episode where we end the episode. So with, with without further ado, I'm going to play the music. And Smiley, do you want to just leave the good people with any closing thoughts as it relates to RBC Heritage or anything else you want to talk about? Um just excited about the content coming. I really, yes. I got a really good golf trip coming to, uh, coming up at Pine Valley. I'm really excited about, we'll get into that here in the next couple weeks. That's going to be very good content. Not that you're going to see on camera, but we will definitely talk about that. Yeah, we'll chit chat about it. We'll have a little chit chat. Yeah. I got, I got a couple golf trips lined up too. So we'll, we'll, we'll make that. And I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm driving it good. <laughs> driving it real good right now, man. I'm cap cap. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you watching and listening as always uh, and we will be back here with a recap of the RBC Heritage in your feed soon talk to you then